Oh, this is a sport that is becoming a major sport mm -hmm. everywhere in the world. And certainly it's a sport that needs an organization of that level. So uh, this coalition of country members uh, leading, leading by uh, North America, USA, Pico, and Pico, Canada, is certainly a group that is going to become strong with the, the unity and the organization, the bylaws that are required uh, to comply with the Olympic Committee. Hello, welcome back to the Future of Pickleball. We've got some fun international news for you today. I have Javier Rigaldo with me. He is one of the leaders and spokesmen of the newly developed Global Pickleball Federation. Javier, thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Paul. It's, it's, it's an honor and, and thank you for this time. Oh, I think this is, is exciting. Um, most of my viewers know that I've been around this game a long time. I have been so excited to hear about the next expansion of the real global game of pickleball and, and, and involvement. Correct. Could you tell us a little bit about what an, an, a global organization does as opposed to we're used to our own USA Pickleball Association here? What is, happens on the global scene? Well, Paul, uh, that's a good question. Uh, as you know, the sport has grown tremendously uh, everywhere. Uh, uh, because of the growth, we need to establish a, a, a common uh, governance body uh, uh, throughout the world. Mm -hmm. uh, rules need to be uh, homologate, homologated uh, everywhere. Uh, why? Because everybody has to be playing under the same rules. Right. So uh, the need for a global organization is uh, very important right now. Cool. You know, the, the, the thing that, that I, I want to ask you is because those of us that have been around the game for a long time, there have been a couple of other conversations or discussions about this. Um, what is it that the Global Pickleball Federation will be able to do that really hasn't been done from other organizations that have talked about doing something? Well, uh, we, uh, uh, we are a result of two years uh, into work uh, where a, a, a great coalition of uh, country members have uh, been brought together uh, and we are building uh, this group that will be able to create and build this organization that Pickable is required. Uh, this, as you know, this is a sport that is becoming a major sport mm -hmm. everywhere in the world. And certainly it's a sport that needs an organization of that level. So uh, this coalition of, of uh, uh, country members uh, leading, leading by uh, North America, USA, Pico, and Pico, Canada, is certainly a group that is going to become strong with the, the unity and the organization, the bylaws that are required uh, to comply with the Olympic Committee, which is a very important step towards sure. that uh, 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 growth. So the, the, the International Olympic Committee compliance is a cornerstone of what you're working on. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So now when, with those kind of things, I mean, one of the things when we start talking about international organizations, uh, they take funding. How will you go about Will, you, will the member countries provide the funding or will sponsors do that? How will that come about? That's, that's exactly the challenges that we have, Paul. Uh, certainly there will be a part from uh, income from the country members, uh, fees that uh, uh, they will have to uh, uh, put into the organization. But also this coalition uh, is going to be uh, appealing to sponsorships. Uh, uh, if we are as a group together, then that's certainly more appealing than if certainly, we're not. Certainly, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and so now when, you, when an organization gets put together and you, you are, you're raising the funding, how do you establish what the board will be and what the organizational structure when you're dealing with countries from all over the world? A very good question. Well, uh, uh, that is why it was very important. Uh, we have been uh, advised by uh, expertise uh, on, in, in sports law mm -hmm. uh, to build uh, bylaws 
uh, comprehensive bylaws that comply with the Olympic Committee. And so uh, uh, that way we can include everyone. We can, uh, uh, every region of the world will be included. Uh, the, the, the organization, although it's, it's made by country members, the continental uh, federation will have a very important administrative part mm -hmm. that will help to really get uh, everything that is needed down the uh, pyramid. You know, that, that's really interesting that you describe that as down the pyramid. One of the things that I know you have to be aware of is we've had a lot of, of struggling, bickering groups within America alone. Does a, an international federation add to that or diminish that? What are the roles that, that they'll be able to control? Uh, no, I think that it, it, it adds because it certainly, I, I, again, it, it, it creates a coalition that uh, becomes the strength for this uh, organization. Surely. So I, I think that, again, the, the rules that right now are being used is, is a result of the rule book by USA Pickable. And that rule book has to be adopted by everyone. And, and that includes all kinds of certifications, all kinds of refereeing, and all the air equipment and all the areas that need to be under one umbrella. There are out there uh, other sports that have very strong organization like soccer, FIFA, uh, and uh, we are a sport that is uh, destined to become a massive sport. So we need a, a strong organization like that internationally, Paul. Oh, I think that's exciting. So um, uh, those of us that have been around pickleball in America, where it kind of began, so the, the standards, the rules that we're used to, and with USA Pickleball being the dominant organizational body here, that's what, we'll, what you believe will become the standard worldwide? Yes, yes. And once the, uh, uh, the countries start to get involved, we will certainly uh, hear every part of the world to see what's happening, how the, the sport is uh, uh, evolving, mm -hmm. and that would certainly uh, put into, into a place. But we need to really have an organization where everybody's voice is heard. Yes, yes, lovely. I think that's terrific. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that is sort of interesting in, in the awareness, I lived in Mexico for a while trying to be involved in pickleball some time ago, um, and it was with a very large retired American and, yes. and Canadian population, yes. so it wasn't all that different. But the Mexican locals that we had come in were all young people. Yes. I hear in both in Asia and in different parts of Europe that pickleball is more of a young person sport than yes. an older person's. Yes. Is there any particular reason that the rest of the world can't engage its older populations like the Americans do? Uh, no, no, but every, I think that it has to do about demographics. Uh, if you go to Europe, Europe has very similar a situation as the U.S., where, where the older uh, uh, players are involved. Uh, countries like Mexico, our demographic is very different. Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, what you're asking is it, more about the demographic of I the see. region. That makes sense. But, but eventually, uh, what I see is that uh, uh, even in, in our countries, just as the, the U.S., the younger are getting involved, the older people are, will get involved in our country as well. Yeah, that is very exciting. Um, what are the, in your perception, and when the things as you're bringing these different these different national organizations together under an umbrella, what are the hottest countries in the in the world that you're aware of that we can tell our our listeners and our our, our viewers what's going on? What are the hot spots in the world? Well, uh, uh, Asia is uh, is is very important. Uh, the sport is growing in in India, in China. Uh, and, and certainly Africa is, is also taking a very important step towards that. They're trying to really organize, they're part of our, our, our organization, and, and those areas are where the sport is going to grow tremendously yes. in, in the next 10 years. Latin America has also a, a, an important part, but, but Asia and Africa, because of demographics, 
is going to be a very important part of the future. Oh, that's exciting. That, it lets me start thinking about my travel. I, I, <laughs> right. I, I need right. to go places <laughs> right. and see these right. things. Right, right, right. So, so as your organization gets formed, and you're going to have, you'll have an international board that represents the width and breadth of all of these different countries coming in, will, you be, will, will that then lead to potential adaptations or adjustments? Because now the global uh, uh, governing body decides that we need to make minor changes to the game. Is that how that forms? Well, um, I, you know, like every sport in the world, eventually there, there, there will be probably some uh, uh, evolution. Mm -hmm. But one of the important things that we, are, we have in mind with Global Pickle Federation is the preservation of the sports. We, we need to make sure that the sport remains as it has so far, and that is the reason why the sport has grown so much. Uh, and, and so we are very jealous on that part to really protect the integrity of the sport. And I love that. And, uh, uh, we're here on Selkirk TV. I'm very involved with Selkirk. I follow all of the changes and evolutions in equipment requirements. Will, will the international body approach the equipment the same way that we're currently approaching it in the U.S.? Yes, certainly, certainly. I mean, the, the, the blueprints are there. Uh, uh, there is a, a work that has been done for many years, mm -hmm. and we just need to uh, uh, raise it to the world arena. But we have already there the base on the blueprints to move forward. So now with, this is really exciting stuff. This sounds like, like what our sport, we've all been hearing and knowing about things happening on an international basis, but now to hear about this magnitude of an organization is powerful stuff. What do you think... Uh, we should be telling America, all of the existing people who might be watching this, how can they get involved in helping pass the word, get messaging out? What should we all be doing as pickleball fans? Right. I, I think that uh, uh, certainly their support in social media is important. Uh, their support in, in donations, in participating in, in events sanctioned by the Global Pickle Federation, which uh, uh, will come tournaments. Uh, right now, uh, we have a, a, an African Games that will happen in March of 2024. It's, it, I mean, it's, it's just months away from now. And events like that uh, uh, require a participation support and, and, and just a, 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 a really interest from the a, a global community. Now, where will that African event be? In Ghana. Oh, really? Uh -huh, uh -huh, right. They're, they're going to have their African uh, games. A, a, a pickleball is now recognized as a sport for the games. So I think that's going to be very exciting. You know, I, I just recently heard that in England they had an English that with a, a tournament with a thousand players. That is, is that correct. Right? That is correct. Uh, uh, England had theirs. Uh, Australia had their, their uh, tournament recently, also close to a thousand players. Uh, uh, Spain had a, another tournament recently. Uh, now a, a tournament is happening in Peru. Uh, uh, so we, we're starting to have a, a tournaments everywhere. What I call, pop, Paul, the popcorn effect. <laughs> we see popcorn everywhere. Very nice. Very nice. I like that. I Thank like you. that. Yeah, that, is, uh, that, that is, is, is fun to hear about. When, when will we, the pickleball committee, when will we be able to to see um, uh, involvement or uh, media announcements or what will be the timeline with this newly formed organization showing itself? Yes, uh, uh, we just uh, recently launched it uh, uh, just a couple of weeks ago. And in the next weeks and months, we will see more noise and more uh, uh, information coming out of the GPF. And, and I'm presuming you'll be doing a website that'll be available? It, it's already there. It's called the Global Pickable Federation .org. Okay. Uh, you can, uh, I, I invite you to go in there, look at it, and, and see uh, the vision and, and, and the goals that we have uh, for the organization, the participants that are right, right, right now, the, the structure that we're building. So it's right there. Very nice, very mm -hmm. nice. I've got to tell you, that's, this, is a, this is exciting for me to hear. And I, I, I know that the whole community is just 
waiting for this to happen. So it is, Paul. And, and let me tell you, uh, it's very important that we move forward uh, as soon as possible because recently we just had a major blow for Pickable. As you know, uh, the uh, Los Angeles uh, Olympic Committee just recently announced the exhibition sports for, for, for the games, and Pickable was not there. Correct. Now, let, let's put that into perspective. This is the fastest growing sport in North America. The games are going to happen in California, in Los Angeles, where probably you have the largest population of pickleball concentrated right there. And pickleball is not going to be there. So that was really a wake up call yes. for the whole pickleball community, for the, the ones who are working towards this. And we can't wait anymore because then, uh, just behind the corner are the Australian next Olympic Games. We need to start doing a, a work. A, we need to unify. We need to start really putting our act together and, and move forward. And, and, and I've got to tell you, I, when I saw the announcements and, and I talked to one of, your, one of your organizers and they reached out to me to ask to put this interview together, the first thing that happened in my mind was, was I've been hearing for years, oh, we're going to be in the Olympics. And I know a guy. And I mean, people think that this is some kind of casual no. thing. It's not. It's, it's no. highly structured. Exactly. But exactly. it's been the lack of an international governing body that I have been told has been the biggest hurdle. I, I, absolutely. Paul, uh, in order to comply with the international committee, you need to have a strong organization very well built, mm -hmm. very well uh, structured, and, and Pickable hasn't had that. So now that's why the GPF uh, uh, has that vision, because we need to really build that organization that can be compared, uh, again, to other sports that are uh, uh, growing a, a lot in, in the rest of the world. All right, you've heard it here, globalpickleballfederation.org, look it up. Gets, find out what's going on, and let's all be part of this. This is very exciting. It is, Paul. It Javier, is. I've enjoyed having you on the show. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you.